We're diving into the turbulent realm of shorts in today's talk and examining how short sellers are frantically trying to buy back synthetic shares. The recent AMC dividend meeting and the ongoing developments that have an impact on significant financial institutions like OBS and Credit Say Hello and Welcome to MC Daily. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the bell to subscribe to the channel, enable post notifications, and enter our giveaway. However, keep in mind that this is not a video offering financial advice. Instead, let's start by analyzing the developments surrounding Credit Sows. Though this endeavor seems far from smooth, with Credit Sows struggles echoing in OB's difficulties, it has been noted that the repeated opening and closing of Credit Sows accounts suggests a turbulent unwinding process likely resulting from their participation in the FI to obtain liquidity post amp toxic swaps concerns about potential bailouts or bankruptcy looming over these institutions have been sparked by the sheer size of the financial crisis, which has required over $12 billion in cash infusion. However, what's often overlooked is the ripple effect this chaos sends throughout the market, as highlighted in Edward Brooks' tweet about NSCC members extending their positions risk. The necessity to stabilize institutions like Credit Seast and OB stems from the broader liquidity drain risk, as elaborated in Frank's tweet. Market-wide downturns have exposed the illegal practice of naked shorting and its potential to destabilize not just individual entities but the entire market ecosystem. The systemic risks associated with shorts are highlighted by the interconnection of financial behemoths such as JP Morgan and its hazardous short positions in gold derivatives. Furthermore, the buyback of synthetic shares by short sellers presents a looming challenge as Bowtech Moose explains. JP Morgan's exposure to gold derivatives, which could surpass its total assets, poses an existential threat should the true price of gold be revealed, triggering a cascade of consequences that could reverberate throughout the financial sector. The shift in the narrative to support the company through movie ticket purchases or merchandise creates a dilemma because while strengthening MC's fundamentals is essential to its survival and thwarting shorts, it also lessens the buying pressure on MC shares, making retail investor strategy more difficult. The key to solving this conundrum is finding a middle ground between encouraging MC financial health and keeping pressure on short positions. To make decisions about whether to support the corporate narrative or the continuous conflict between retail investors and shorts is affected by a focus only on purchasing AMC shares. Let's examine these developments by directing our energies towards aiding an MC. Central business investors want to strengthen their company's resistance to short selling pressures, but doing so comes with trade-offs that could lessen the immediate impact of retail investment on the price of an MC share. Nevertheless, the long-term advantages of strengthening an MC's fundamentals by promoting stability and sustainable growth cannot be overstated. As we navigate these uncertain waters, investors can steer the narrative towards a favorable outcome for MC and the retail community at large by remaining vigilant, adaptive, and aware of broader market dynamics. One thing that is certain is that retail investors' resilience and determination will continue to shape the trajectory of this ongoing saga with unity, strategic acumen, and unwavering result. In essence, investors lay the groundwork for sustained defiance against shorts, minimizing the risk of market manipulation and safeguarding AMC's future. That's all we have for you today, gentlemen. What are your thoughts on an MC stock? Thank you for watching, and please get engaged and let us know in the comments section below.